Prayer is work. Prayer is a privilege to can alter situation. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. When they went to the mountain of transfiguration and they prayed, suddenly his face, the fashion of his face was changed. You can turn to another man. The Bible says in Luke that Jesus went to the wilderness there, he prayed, and he returned back in the power of the Spirit. James 5 and verse 13, he said, He is there among you afflicted, let him what? Pay. That's prescription for pain. It's prayer. What will stop pain and what will make you survive pain is what? Prayer. Luke 18 and verse 1, he said that men ought always to pray amplified and not to turn to what? Cowards. Because when you are so weak, you get to a point you begin to speak things anti scriptures like it happened he begin to say things that doesn't go in line with God's word and God appeared to him and said who is it that darkened counsel without knowledge when you are prayerless you will not have good picture and perspective of the happenings and the dealings of God especially in the times we are in now where it looks like everywhere is hard and difficult people don't know it is in those kind of seasons that God raises men so anytime you see yourself in difficult situations of life, it to produce what? You can't like to be gold and not like the furnace. If greatness is your desire, Wahala will be your cousin. Battles will be your nephew. That's why you must be valiant. He said that men ought always to pray and not to what? Faith. James 5, 16. For Elijah was a man of like passion with, like, like we are. He had the same feelings like we do. He said, confess your fault one to another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent, heartfelt, continued prayer of the righteous man make a tremendous power word available. So what are the four elements that makes prayer powerful? Number one is that for a prayer to be effective, it must be fervent. Fervent is spiritual seriousness and fire. Did you not read about Jesus in Luke 22? How that the Bible says he prayed when he came to a matter of life and destiny. He prayed to a point that his sweat became as droplets of blood. You never read about that? He prayed! Really? You mean that's what changes months? That's what changes nations? That's what bets revival? That's what bets greatness? wonder when the battles of life come. You can't stand them. He prayed, his sweat became as blood. It must be done with fancy, spiritual seriousness and fire. It's like blessing. Why die? You know that's not the first time Jacob had been in Bethel. The first time he was there, he slept. He slept. All he could see was angel ascending and descending. He came out of it and said, ah, what a miss of opportunity. God was in this place and I was, I knew it not. The next time he had Unity again. He held the leg of the angel. Even when the angel touched his thigh, he said, I will never let you go. I accept this situation change. I've always said, and I'll keep saying it, that God does no business with unserious people. If you show God your seriousness, he shows you his seriousness. He does no business with unserious people. Your prayer must be done with fervency. Number two, it must be heartfelt, not mouth filled. It must come from the depth of your heart. That's how I pray. Oh God, let the situation change. Once your heart is connected into the prayer, you begin to travel into places from the imaginations of your heart. You begin to see years ahead of you because you are lost in the prayer. Melbourne, God taught him how to pray. He said when you pray with the combination and the unity of your spirit, soul and body. You know when you have that in place, you will see the fourth man appear in the fire. And number three, ingredient for effective prayer is that it must be what? Continued. At chapter 10, he said colonials, your continuous prayers become a memorial. There is a quantity of prayer that shifts things in the spirit. The servant of God, Umar Pah, was desperate and hungry for the power and the glory of God to be used mightily in ministry. He set up himself to begin to pray, 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 pray. He said he goes to a point. God asked him, "What are you looking for, man?" He said, "I don't know." He said, "Ah, from today, anything you see, do it." Great servant of God, Apostle John C. Suleiman, gather some of his boys every night. No prayer points. They will start at 9 p.m. 5 a.m. the next morning. He said one day the boy touched him and said, Papa, what is the prayer point? He said, we are praying because we love him. Just pray. If people say it is value that attracts money, when you pray, what does God add on your life? It's not a waste of time. You think you are wasting your time? Is it not value you have? Let God put value on your life. It must be continuous. The Moravian brothers prayed on the Moravian fall for 100 years. There is something called volume in prayers. 
Acts chapter 2 verse 1 the Bible says and when the days of Pentecost was fully come for every reality, every change you want in God, it's called the mystery of the seventh deep. Sometimes you are praying for the first year, nothing is shifting. You are just like Lehman that has dipped once. You know that leprosy was in Lehman's generation for seven generations. I'm sure you know. Seven generations had that leprosy. So for every dipping, he dipped. He was curing that leprosy from each generation. Imagine he stopped at the second. What defeated defeated your grandfather defeated your great father great grandfather is what you want to defeat with 30 minutes prayer point say so, oh you author author you are done thank you god he's a security man that answer your prayer you call him god it must be what Genius. you keep putting pressure in Acts chapter 6 he said and we will give ourselves to the ministry of what prayers he didn't say we will try prayer is not what you try you throw yourself at it Isaiah 64 and verse 7. He said, and there is none that has seared it up himself to take a hold of God. It must be done continuous. Any break, the devil will take an advantage of you. Before you know, you begin to speak like one that doesn't have spiritual wisdom. Anywhere you see there is murmuring, complaint, carnal behavior. There is less prayer there. There's prayerlessness there. You know what the Bible says that to be carnally minded is you're dying. You see it? because of lukewarmness as so the room for carnality is there the way you speak that's the first sign to know prayerlessness when you begin to talk like cowards when little things offend you when you begin to get into offense so cheaply it's a symptom that is the litmus test that your prayer life is down get easily into offense into murmuring to complain you be you do some things even you can't believe yourself it's a litmus test showing your prayer gauge you need to run back and increase volume. If you want to be gold, don't dodge the furnace. He didn't say if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said when you. So in your lifetime, a time will come you will walk there. He said when you pass through the fire, not if you pass. It means in your lifetime that you will through fire. Out of the rock comes honey. It's from rocky situations he produces honey. Make sure you stay in the place of prayer. Is that most of the times we miss moments in God? The biggest secret of Christianity I have found out is spiritual timing. The Bible says, At one time Jesus walked through Jerusalem and he wept for them because they never knew the hour of what their visitation. They didn't know salvation has come. He wept for them. He wept for them. Spiritual timing. Prayer makes you sensitive. A prayerless man can easily be manipulated. That's why somebody will carry phone and call you and say, bring 10k, you chop 1 million, you sent it because you are prayerless. Prayer is the spiritual sieve for voices. It's the spiritual sieve. You can't manipulate a prayer man. It's not possible. He will sense it, he will see it, he will hear it, he will smell it. His discernment is sharp and high. That men ought always to pray and not to turn to cowards. That men ought always to pray. There is no time you can reach and say, I have finished prayer. That's the only syllabus we have not been given the authority to exhaust. Men ought always, always, always to pray and not to what? Faint. Lift up your hands. So it must be. Number one, we say your prayer must be fervent. Number two, heartfelt. It must come from your heart. It must be continuous and scripturally based. Hosea 14 and verse 2. He seek you what and call to me. Speak with you what? Words. The word prayer means prosuche in the Greek. It means to bring what you have put inside. So when you took God's word in the inside of you, you come in the place of prayer and say, Lord, is it not your word that say, I shall be the head and not the tail? From today, no downward moments in